Good morning, everybody. My name is Rosemary. Welcome to my backyard. It's a beautiful Sunday morning and a great day to practice some yoga. Just a little bit about me. I've been teaching integral yoga for 15, 20 years. I teach at local YMCA's and at uh, local gyms. Hatha yoga. Hatha yoga is where we put our body through a series of poses. And these poses are going to allow our body to stretch, to become flexible, to be one with our body. We're going to integrate the breath. And that's what yoga is. It's the union of mind, body, spirit. So uniting the thinking mind with the stretch body part with our breath. So let's begin. I want you to find yourself in a seated pose, whether it's sitting in hero pose or sitting in savasana, or rather in a sukhasana, which is just a cross-legged pose. As we sit, I want you to feel the bottom of your spine, your coccyx, against the mat or against the floor, and I want you to lift your torso, not your shoulders, but lengthen the spine. Arms are resting on our thighs, palms are facing up. Let's tuck our chin in, push it back. Trying to get our spine as vertical as we can. Let's close our eyes and let's inhale and exhale through the nose. I want you to allow the abdomen to rise and fall with each breath. Now this is the way that we were meant to breathe. Allowing our entire body to breathe. Bring in just the right amount of oxygen to every cell of the body. We'll begin with our pranayama. Pranayama are breathing exercises. Our pranayama today will be a four eight breath. So we're gonna inhale to the count of four. We're gonna exhale to a count of eight. And it's your count of four, your count of eight. So inhaling, lengthening the spine, Keep it lengthened, exhaling to our count of eight. Relax those shoulders. Now, if seated cross-legged is not comfortable, you can always lengthen a leg, perhaps lengthen both legs. Whatever is comfortable, just keep in mind that we want to elongate the spine. We want to relax the shoulders, palms face up, it gives our shoulders a slight rotation. For those who like cross-legged, try on crossing your legs and crossing it, switching the feet, switching the legs. It's going to feel odd because we always tend to go to one position. So just listen to the breeze. Listen to the birds and breathe. We know a lot about our state of mind by the way we breathe. Let's lift our arms up. Let's bring palms together. And now let's bring them to our heart center. This is called Namaste hands. Namaste in Sanskrit means that the spirit in me honors the spirit in you. And while in this Namaste hands, we're going to work with our wrists. So let's inhale, palms up. 
exhaling, palms down. Watch those shoulders, push them down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. If you work a lot with your computer, this is a wonderful exercise to release strain on your lower arms and your wrists. Two more. Last one. Well done. Let's release our arms. Now let's bring our arms behind us. Fingers will be pointing towards us. Now let's open up the chest. Let's bring that chin up, squeezing shoulder blades together. yoga breaths. Use the entire body to breathe. Allow the belly to rise and fall with each breath. Two more here. Let's bring chin to chest. Come back to center. Let's lift our arms Palms together to heart center. Well done. Now let's bring our palms down on our knees. Palms face down this time. We're going to work on trunk rotations. So this is where we're going to try to isolate our torso from our hips and our legs. Palms are down. Let's inhale back. And now let's make circles on the ceiling or on the sky. And keep that spine neutral. We have a tendency to bend forward and curve the spine. We want to keep it neutral. The movement should be at our hip flexors. Now let's reverse our flow. circles of this side. And let's come back to center. Well done. Now let's just lengthen one leg, whichever leg you wish to lengthen. Toes are pointing straight up. Let's turn our torso towards that open leg. This is called head to knee pose. So let's lift our arms up, our shoulders down away from ears. And let's release the entire body on that length of leg. You should be feeling a stretch on our QL. That's our quadratus lombardum. These are two small muscles at the bottom of our back at either side of our spine. And these muscles are not meant to hold a lot of weight, but yet we do that very often. They attach to our ilium and then up to our lowest rib. So they're not strong enough for us to lift things, which we often tend to do. That's why we always want to keep our spine neutral. Let's lift our leg up. Bring in that leg in. Let's lengthen the other one and let's find our head to knee pose on this side. 
turning towards that length of life, inhaling up. We exhale, head to knee. Two more breaths here. And we slowly lift up. Now let's open up our legs in a straddle. We're just gonna see how far is our range of motion in this straddle. We'll try at the end of class to see how far we went just by stretching for a couple of minutes. So let's lengthen. Lengthen arms up and let's bring our torso forward as far as we can. And slowly lift. Lift up, palms back to heart center. Let's release our arms and let's find ourselves in tabletop. So tabletop means we're going to be in all fours. Socks come off. In tabletop, what we want to do is we want to make that our knees are aligned with our hips. We want to make sure that the center of our hand, that's where our fingers meet the palm, that's underneath our shoulder. So we're not putting pressure on our wrist, which is our carpal tunnel. So here we are in tabletop. This is neutral spine. We're going to push our tailbone up. We're going to look up and we're in our cow pose. For every Pose, there's a counter pose. The counter pose to cow is cat. So let's lengthen our spine towards the sky. Relax the head. Let's find ourselves back at tabletop. Now let's tuck our toes under. We're going to come to our short down dog. We're going to Lengthen our legs, shoot our tailbone up to the sky, pushing heels towards the ground, chest towards thighs. So this is a short down dog. This will begin our slow stretches of our back of our legs, our, quad, our um, hamstrings. Inverted poses are very good for our heart. Our heart doesn't have to beat that hard to bring the blood up to the head, but also it kickstarts our metabolism. So let's release back to tabletop. Let's inhale cow. Let's exhale cat. Let's find our short down dog, just tucking toes under, pushing heels to the ground. Let's release, inhaling cow, exhaling cat, short down dog. Let's release back to tabletop. Now we're going to work on our spinal balances. This also works to help the core strengthen. Let's lengthen our right arm and let's lengthen our opposite leg, our left leg. Notice 
We're not lifting our hip up like we're a male dog at the fire hydrant. Our hips are facing down. We feel our ear next to our upper right arm. Let's release, let's find tiger on the other side. And let's release to tabletop. From here, we're gonna come into our extended child's pose. We're gonna sit on our heels, we're gonna lengthen our arms, pushing tailbone to heels, releasing our head on the mat. So child's pose is a resting pose. So at any time you feel fatigued, you're on the floor, just come to child's pose. This pose is squeezing our adrenal glands. So when we release from child's pose, fresh oxygenated blood flows through the glands, releasing toxins. And the adrenal glands are just little hats on top of our kidneys, so at either side. Let's come back to tabletop. Now we're gonna work tiger in a flow. So we're gonna inhale tiger one side, exhaling tabletop, inhaling tiger on the other side and exhaling tabletop. And I want you to work your movement, your breath. Lung capacity is different for all of us. You can either push the heel away or point the toes. One more on each side. And now let's release back to extended child's pose. And notice our hands, our fingers are splayed out wide. Our hands are shoulder distance apart. We're going to do is we're going to our kneeling plank. So we're going to bring our body weight above our hands. So our femur and our torso are on the same diagonal line. So this is our kneeling plank. You can come to full plank, tucking toes under, just removing the knees. And it's your choice. You can do kneeling or full. Spine is neutral. From here, we're going to find our downward facing dog. So we're just going to shoot that tailbone up to the sky, pushing heels towards the ground. Now we have a tendency to move our legs forward, and we're doing that because that's easier. Don't do that. From your plank, let's all come back to plank. From here, we find our downward facing dog. We're going to do this breath and movement, or movement and breath rather. We're going to bring ourselves to plank, we inhale, find our downward face and dog, we exhale. And again, at any time, you can release the knees on the ground and just do extend the child's pose, kneeling plank. One more flow. Let's release our knees. Let's find our extended child's pose. Now that was a lot of weight on our hands if we're not used to putting weight on our hands. So what we can do instead of doing full plank, we can come to a low plank or full stick. 
So let's lengthen our arms forward. Let's shift body weight forward. So we're in our kneeling plank. So what we'll do is we'll just remove the hands by placing our elbows where our hands are. And notice our elbows are right underneath our shoulders. So we're stacking our joints. We can stay here or we can lift the knees off the mat and we're in a stick or low plank. Now, if there's only one exercise you can do for the whole body, it's this one. World record is eight hours and some minutes. Let's release knees on the ground. Palms come back underneath shoulders, kneeling plank. And let's come back to our extended child's pose. And you've noticed that we've gotten a little bit warmer now. We're our larger muscles. From here, we're gonna come into our lunges. So let's bring our right foot at kneeling lunge. Make sure that that right heel is either in front of the knee or right underneath. We never wanna see this. That will mess up our knee. We want to stack our joints, hands either side of right foot. Push pelvis down, open up the chest. Let's tuck left toes under, let's find our full lunge. From here, let's find our plank. Downward facing dog. Left leg forward lunge. And remember, you can always bring that back knee down and make it a kneeling lunge or full lunge. Open up the chest. Notice our right femur and our spine are at the same diagonal line. From here, let's find our full plank. And downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Now let's open up our chest, back bend. This is our upward bend. Back to plank. Downward facing dog. And again, if this is too much, you can always drop to the knees instead of down dogs. You're at extended child's pose instead of full plank. We come to kneeling plank instead of full up dog, kneeling up dog. Right foot forward lunge. From here, we're going to step forward into a forward fold. Left leg forward, we fold our body forward. Let's cup our elbows with our palms, allowing the arms just to release and relax. We should be feeling a lengthening of the back of our legs. From here, let's place our hands on our shins. Let's lengthen legs, lengthen torso. We're in our monkey pose. 
We always want to keep our knees soft. We never want to lock the joints. When we lock our knees, the muscles at either side of that joint stop working. Let's bend our knees and let's sit back in our chair. Lengthening arms forward. Use our legs to lengthen, lift us back bend. Let's come up to the sky, allowing our arms to drop down. Mountain pose. So what's our mountain pose? Our feet should be in line with our hips. Our knees should be soft, never locked. Okay, watch the hips. Don't push the hips back. By pushing the hips back, we engage those QLs. By bringing the hips forward, we lengthen them, and then our leg muscles begin to work. Okay, let's stand in, a, in the front of our mat. Let's lift our arms up, back bend. Swan dive, forward fold. Right leg back lunge. Downward facing dog. Plank or kneeling plank. Up dog or kneeling up dog. Plank, downward facing dog. Left leg forward lunge. Forward fold. Monkey. chair. Back bend. Palms to heart center. Mountain pose. Those were some of the poses in the sun salutation. We're going to come into our balancing poses now. Right in the sun. You know the shadows in the sun don't make it for a nice video. So our balancing pose today is going to be anything that we can do just on one foot, on one leg, making sure that our knees remain soft. So let's just begin with something very simple. Let's point our toes away. That has opened up that hip. Let's bend the knees and just try to hover the toes. Okay, we can either put the foot against our lower leg between our joints. We never want to put pressure on the knee. Or we can bring our leg above our knee. What happens to our hands and arms? Well, palms at heart center. This is our tree pose. Palms on, arms up to the sky. So we can even open up the limbs of our tree. So wherever you feel comfortable. Now mind you, balancing poses on carpeted floors is very difficult. Lots of movement. Right now, my bottom foot is moving. 20 muscles at work to keep myself balanced. Also, balance is, lives in our ears. As we age, we lose our balance. But what we don't want to lose is the strength of our muscles to keep us 
can help us when we become unbalanced. Let's release, shaking out the legs. Let's find our tree on the other side. Again, let's open up that hip so now our knee can bend out. And let's find our tree, wherever our tree is. Smile. It's a beautiful day. We're doing something fun while at home. Maybe one day in the future we'll have yoga in the park. I hope you all can join us. We've missed seeing all of your smiling faces. And let's release. Good, let's shake it out. Okay, let's try another pose. Let's try a standing big toe. That's a photo that you saw in festivals. So, let's interlace our fingers on our big toes. You can stay here. This may just be your standing big toe. Use the other arm as a level to find ourselves balanced. We smile. Let's release. We have another leg. Shaking it out. Okay, find your balance. Remember, knees are always soft. We don't want to lock them. Let's interlace our fingers on our big toes. Find your balance. Again, use the other leg. It's a level. We find our standing big toe on this side. Wherever your standing big toe is. Whoa. Dancing standing big toe. Well done. And we release. Good job. Okay, we're going to come into our warrior series next. So our warriors, all of our strength is going to come from beneath, below our waist. All of our largest muscles. So what we want to do is we want to bring our right, let's say our left foot, just open it up 45 degrees. All right? Now half of 45 degrees, or rather 90 degrees, and now let's do 45 degrees. Too much men. Let's bend our right leg and just stand forward. And then we lift our arms up. So how this looks on the side, here's our warrior one. When we come to warrior two, be careful with that front knee. I don't want your body to be moving that knee. So I want you to push that knee towards its pinky as we open up to warrior two. So now our chest is open. We keep looking out the hand above the bent knee. And watch, my knee has not moved. It's still aligned with the heel. Okay, let's turn that front palm, right palm up, lifting arm up, releasing left arm back, reverse warrior. Back to warrior two. Warrior one. And let's step back to mountain pose. 
good. Now let's find our warrior one on the other side. So right foot, 90 degrees, half of 90, 45. Let's bend that left knee, stepping forward. Both hips face forward. Remember, we want to protect the knee. We lift. Relax the shoulders. Don't let them become your earrings. And that's my guard dog. Tell me somebody's walking. Warrior two, watch the knee. Reverse warrior. Warrior two. step back to mountain. Good job. So we heard warrior one, warrior two, reverse. What about warrior three? All right? And warrior three is we want to lengthen our arms forward up to the sky, bring in torso forward. So our torso is at a horizontal line now. And we're going to lengthen the other leg, also horizontal. There's our warrior three. It's a balancing pose. Back to mountain. find our warrior three on the other side. So, lengthen arms, lengthen torso. We are horizontal. Now let's lengthen that back leg. We started to get warm using those large muscles. Now let's open up our feet so that our toes are at the edge of the mat and our heels are inward. We're going to come into our garland pose. This is our squat. So before the invention of chairs, this is how we sat. So let's lift the arms up, palms together to heart center, we bend our knees, and we find ourselves in garland pose. Now for some, this may be difficult to put the heels down. So you may want to roll up another mat or put a block underneath your heels so you can have full body weight on the entire foot. Let's release our arms, hands by our sides. We are seated, lengthening legs forward, lengthening our spine. Let's release our hands and arms. This is called staff pose. And here we're going to come into our seat, lifting arms up. We inhale, exhaling, we fold forward. Allow the body to relax and just breathe. Knees are soft. Remember, never lock those knees. We 
slowly let's lift ourselves up we're going to find head to knee pose but this time what we will do is we're going to bend one knee and then allow that knee to fall out so that the foot is against that other thigh let's lift our arms up and head to knee pose on this side Let's roll ourselves up. Let's come back to staff pose. Let's bend the other knee, allow it to open up. Let's lift our arms up. Head to knee pose on this side. roll ourselves up. Now let's find that straddle fold that we did at the beginning. Let's open up our legs in a straddle. Let's lift our arms up and let's find fold. We should be closer to the ground than before. I've got somebody knocking at my door now. Now let's find ourselves with one hand underneath the thigh. Let's use that as a level to bring ourselves all the way back. Let's hug our knees. We feel our entire back grounded. Let's rock from side to side. Maya, you're in our way. come to center. Let's open up our arms forming that letter T. Let's allow both knees to fold and release to one side and then we bring our head to the other side. The key to the twist is to keep both shoulders grounded. Okay? Twists are really good for our nervous system and good for our digestion. head back to center and let's twist to the other side. Let's find our fetal pose. Let's bring palms onto the ground. Let's lift ourselves up. Finding our seated pose where we began. Full yoga breath. Let's lift our arms up to the sky, palms together to heart center. I want to thank you for taking time out of your Sunday morning to do something good for your mind, 
for your body, for your spirit. And while this Tuesday is Giving Tuesday, where we give to nonprofits, I invite you to start giving today to Festivents, who has brought so many smiles, so much music, so many ships, so much fun to our whole area, to Virginia, from the Wine Festival, to the Children's Festival, to the Latino Festival, to everything that these guys have put in the park for our enjoyment. And thank you in advance for donating to Fest events. And I hope to see you here next Sunday Hopefully it's a beautiful day like today and we can come and practice some roga in my backyard. Namaste. Just remember, the way you look at things changes the way things look. Bye, everybody.